most scary thing in Linux that most people find scary, it's not scary. It actually, it's also the thing that attracts most people to Linux. This is called something called the shell, Linux shell. So shell is, um, when you look at your Windows or Mac, the desktop that you find once you boot, that is a graphic user interface uh, shell. So, but then there are other, other ways of interacting with your computer. Graphic user means it's because uh, you use graphics, you can see pictures, you can click, that is why it's called graphic. You can also use command line. Command line is where you tell commands to your machine, uh, you hit enter and the commands are executed. So I've already added it to my favorites. You can launch from here or you can just come here like we said and you search for terminal. Just about any Linux distro that you install out there is going to have a terminal. You can see the reason why a lot of people are, are afraid of, of the terminal because this is what you get. Now, in a server setting, this is all you get. You don't get the, the desktop at all. You don't get any pictures. You just, uh, the entire screen just boots to this. And that is how servers work. And this is one of the reasons why it's very safe because you have to know exactly what you want to do uh, for you to be able to take some action in that machine. Yeah, so the first thing you'd like to know is um, when you're using terminal, the first thing you'd like to know is who you are or where you are. So it, it might be confusing. I know once you get used to, to the Linux world, you might uh, you will see uh, how you can get lost. Sometimes you don't know exactly in which machine that you're working on. I know you, it sounds funny, which machine, what do you mean I have this laptop? I could be sitting here with my laptop and I am accessing 12 different servers. And so every time I open one section of the terminal, uh, I would like to know who exactly is logged in. Am I logged in as root? Uh, the first thing you want to know when you're in terminal is who you are. So you can use the command who. So this tells you who exactly is logged in and how long they have been logged in. In this case, it's the Sub-Saharan gig. The other thing you're going to find is where exactly are you in the system? Where are you? So there's something called PW. There's a command called PWD. So PWD is a um, print working directory or presently working directory. Directories in Linux are what you call folders in, in, in Windows. So um, print currently working directory. It will tell you that currently you are in home, sub-Saharan gig. So this is now my home. So if, if I was uh, say to navigate, say to something else, I'm in VAR now, print uh, working directory. It will tell you that you're now in VAR. If you move in further and then you try to run the print the current working directory, so you can see we are inside the VAR, lib, log, rotate. Print working directory. Let's look at a, a command called list. List is ls. So list is uh, it lists inside where you currently are. It will list everything that is inside that directory. So in this case, we are inside home, and inside home I have my desktop uh, directory. I have my documents. I have my downloads. I also have a file here, .rpm file, music, pictures, videos, snap, and all that. So. Say you want to move from home and you move one further into document. So you change directory, documents. Notice one thing, I'm using a capital D exactly the way it is written here. In Linux, capitalization is a big deal. If you have a, a downloads with capital D and downloads a small D, these are considered to be two different files or two different folders. So you switch to documents. So now we are inside documents. So if you now ls, you can see inside documents, we just have VLC desktops. What if you want to go back? If you want to go back one step, you change directory space dot dot. This tells, uh, this tells the system to go back one step to the folder that you are working on before you came to the current one. You can see we are back to home. List has a lot of other uses. It has a lot of additional commands that you can give it. Say for example, you list all. That A stands for all. So it will list all. You can see that we have some uh, items that we didn't have before. So anything that starts with a dot 
in Linux is a hidden file. You can only see it if you say to list all. The next thing is if you use L. So in this case, it's going to, to print everything that you have in that folder with permissions. So the next thing you need to understand with uh, Linux once you start understanding it is, is permissions. So these are the permissions. So you can see here that uh, desktops is owned by the user sub-Saharan gig and the group, this is the group. Okay, so you can see the group here is also sub-Saharan Geek. Groups, groups in Linux are also an important thing. It's, it's you can you can invite someone to a group, and another user who is not in that group cannot be able to use to access uh, all the services that you're able to access in that particular group. So by default, once you create a user in Linux, you're, there's a group created under your username. So if you create a user called Kenya, then there will be a group called Kenya. If if they want to use that group to control a certain access of certain files, other users have to be in that group to be able to access. The first part here uh, tells you the particular user who, who made this file or who owns it uh, and what they can do. Read, to write, to execute and to delete. What about members of the group? All the members who, who have been added to the Sub-Saharan group, Sub-Saharan geek group, what can, what can they do? They can execute and they can read. They cannot, for example, delete, cannot write, so it's read only for them. And then we have the world out there. These permissions have been denied for the people out there. So you can change this. You can change the ownership of a file. If you create a file or a folder and you would like to change using a command called CHO. So the other command is the change directory. I change directory to desktop. So when you list, there's nothing. And you can see this, the desktop, so there's nothing. So how do you create a file? See, for example, there are so many commands that you can use to create a file. So one of them is, for example, touch. So touch, if you touch a file, like say a text file, and you say touch uh, text file this, text file one, and it exists, it will just open that text file. If it doesn't exist, it will create a file with that name inside of where you are currently, inside the directory that you're working on currently. Okay, so now if you ls, you can see inside we have gigs.tsc. If you look at this place, we already have a, a .txt file that is called gigs. Okay, but then notice uh, something here. You can see the desktop has nothing. Even though in Windows, if you had created a file and put it on the desktop, you would see it here. So in CentOS and in some other Linux distros, that is not the case. You have to access the Linux directory itself for you to be able to see the file. So touch is one of them. Uh, I would encourage you to look at some of these commands. Another one you can use is cut. So cut, if you cut this particular file, then if it has content inside, you'll be able to read it. Uh, right now it doesn't have content. So how do you put content in it? So let's look at a command called vim. Vim. And then gigs.txt. So this brings you into a platform where you can type text, you can input text. This is also very useful when it comes to bash scripting. Uh, once you start to understand Linux more, you're going to start learning about bash scripting. This is where you, one of the ways that you can add text. Another command that you can use to add text is nano. Nano is actually considered to be the more common one. I encourage you to look at as many as possible. It's a learning curve. Sorry, before you input, you have to hit the I and see the insert down here. That way you are able to input the text. So, the quick. Yeah, so this is your text. So once you want to close the Vim uh, text editor, you hit escape, colon, and then you say write, quit. So, uh, inside the desktop, we have this file. So if you cut into that file, which is gigs.txt. You can see we can you can see the content of, of the file itself here. If you want to copy say this file, uh, you use the command cp. Cp means copy. So you cp uh, gigs, and we want to copy it inside the same folder for now. So you are going to say this this second one. You are going to call it gigs two. And so when you list, you can see we now have two files. You can see a copy of it even on the graphic user interface. So that's how you copy files. And once you copy them, how do you delete them? How do you delete files? So to delete files, you use the remove command. 
then you list and you can see we no longer have that so removing linux is, is a very effective way of deleting so don't just remove something if you're not ready to lose it because uh unlike in windows and mac where you find there is a trash can or even in your phone where you delete things and then they're waiting for you to recover them back in linux once you remove something it's pretty hard to to recover it so it's lost it's gone forever so be careful when you're using some of these commands. The other thing I want us to look at in Linux is something called root. So root is a big deal. So root is the most, the top of everything, the most powerful user. In terms of Windows, this would be uh, the equivalent of administrator. So root owns everything in a Linux system. It is root that owns all the other users. So how do you access root and what exactly is it used for? As root, you can do a lot of things. You can do just about anything on your system you can even delete the entire system that's why it's extremely uh, important that you be very careful when you're handling yourself uh, in the terminal as root one of the ways to protect you from doing something uh, you will regret when you're a root user is that linux allows you to work as ordinary user but then you have privileges that you can if you need to run a particular command like for example if you need to change the system things like data and all that updates you need to input your password you will still run it as the sata run gig for you to be able to have administrative privileges when you're running commands that cannot be run by ordinary users then use sudo uh, prefix so you say for example uh, if you try to say uh yeah update this is the command for when you're in centos and you want to update your system this is the command so if i was root and i say that then i would it would just update but it's telling me that this command has to be run under the root user. One way is you either switch into root and the other way is to run it uh, as the sub-Saharan geek. But then up front here you put sudo yam update. Yeah? So it will just ask for your password and automatically it will start uh, checking for updates you can see it has been updated so we do not have an issue there so sudo is used to run commands that um, you cannot run uh, as ordinary user sudo is what makes you you tell it that uh, i will need to run this command specifically as admin so does every user have access to sudo no sudo is a group remember we said every user has access to certain groups so you have to add a new user once you create a new user you have to add them to the uh, to the sudo group if you're using ubuntu it's called sudo as group if you're using debian based like centos and fedora you're going to find it's called wheel wheel in centos is the represent if you're in wheel then you're able to run sudo commands so the next thing you'd like to know is how to get help on your terminal. So there are so many ways of getting help on your terminal. One of the things that you can use is manuals. We have manuals, so you can see, like for example, what is the manual for? Uh, we just use sudo. So manual for sudo, and it will open. It will give you the what sudo does. It executes a command as another user, which is uh, root. Another thing you can use is is help. So you can say dash dash help. And again, it will give you explanation of uh, whatever you would like to understand. So another way to get help, uh, this is a bit advanced, is something called info. So say for example, you want to understand sudo info. Uh, again, you're going to find a lot of information about uh, that particular command and what it does. So cool, there are a lot of ways to learn, uh, even without going to the internet, there are a lot of ways to help yourself with that on the terminal. The other thing I want us to look at is how do you make folders. So in Windows, you right click and then you just create new folder and rename it. How do you do it in terminal? So let's go again to desktop. So cd to desktop. And here we are with our file there. But we want to add a folder there. And we want to add this folder using a command called make directory mkdir so make directory space and then what we call that directory so you can see we have created two directories here we have linux we have gurus so when you you want to remove a folder you have to when you want to remove a directory you have to use a remove minus r this also means that it can remove or when you are trying to remove a folder in some distro seeds you are able to remove a folder using rm but if the folder contains some contents inside then you are not able to remove in which case then you need to use the rm minus r uh, to be able to remove the folder and its contents. So there are a lot of commands that you have to install that are not already installed, like say for example htop. So how do you install? So you install differently. So for example for Ubuntu, you have to run sudo apt 
get install a VLC, something like that to install VLC media player. Uh, it changes with every distro, slightly changes. If you are using, for example, uh, Fedora, you're going to use sudo dnf um, install Chrome, something like that. Yeah. So um, this DNF or apt get, it's called a repository. Repositories are where in Linux where it's like a store for apps. This is the uh, what uh, in modern day the uh, Google and Apple call app store. Yeah. So uh, traditionally Linux has always had a, an app store. So this is these are what are called a repository. So for you to install VLC, it has to be inside a certain repository, and you access it there, and then you install. Yeah. So for example, in this case, uh, let's uh, use the repo the main the main uh, the default repository for CentOS uh, distro is YAM. So sudo yum install htop. And you ask for the password, and you enter your password. So when you're typing your password, you will notice you it doesn't type on the screen. You just type it, and the system itself takes in. So once you type your password, then it will go to the repo, to the ARM repo, and see whether you have that H top thing. If it's there, then it is going to tell you it's there, the size and all the, the, the package and how big it is. And if you need to install it, then you go ahead and say yes. So it will download and install. And this is how you install software uh, using the terminal in, 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 in Linux. So it has already installed. So right now, if you run that command, htop, uh, you can see now we're able to see all the information. So this just has more details of the command that we had run earlier of uh, top. So this just tells you who are the users who are currently running your system. What exactly are they doing in the system and uh, the resources they're using and all that. This is very important for the people who administer servers. This is how you know how your server is eating up CPU space. You, you might be having a web server and you just, CPU is always reading so for the last two hours has been over 90% and you want to understand what exactly is being executed and by which user. You could have been hacked. This is also a way of telling that you're hacked. You could see a new user here doing stuff and you're able to tell uh, that the problem is that maybe there are some other things happening in your system and all that, yeah? Uh, to leave htop, you just uh, press a Q. Uh, there are so many commands you can learn. When you're learning Linux, uh, my advice is that you should try to be as patient as possible. The learning curve is not all that difficult. You can manage, it's very fun. Once you get used to using Linux, you'll never go back to your other operating systems, I can guarantee you that. It's such fun, it's so much freedom, and it's a different thing. And you know, just for fun of it, just try it, and it's you'll, you'll have fun. It is also an advantage when we have a lot more people using Linux globally. If you'd like us to look at a more advanced use of the terminal in Linux, let me know in the comments below. Uh, we can do another video where we deal uh, specifically with uh, more advanced uh, terminal commands. Yeah, but this is a good start. We have covered a lot today. The aim was not to intimidate you into using Linux. Welcome to the world of Linux. Welcome to the world of freedom when it comes to using your computer. We are very grateful to have you. If you are new to this channel, thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel and also to like this video and also to share. Yeah, also leave us a comment and tell us what else you'd like to, to cover inside Linux. Yeah, so thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Have a great week ahead. I'm your Tech Guy Tech Karaoke and remember, everybody needs to know a Tech Guy. Thank you.